You bought an iPad to get organized, but now you've got more apps, more clutter, and somehow less focus. I have been there. After using my iPad and testing various models and over 50 plus apps, I have cracked the code that actually turns your iPad into a digital organization powerhouse. And today I'm giving it to you. We'll cover the best iPad models for your budget, how to set up distraction-free focus modes, the apps that actually work, and how to build a routine that keeps you organized for the long haul without burnout. First, let's help you choose the right iPad without overspending and what each model is best used for digital organization. For any iPad, I recommend getting an Apple Pencil. You have two options. You have the USB-C for the basic iPad models from iPad Pro 12.9 which goes from the third to the sixth generation. You also have the iPad Pro 11 inch, which is from the first to the fourth generation and so on that actually supports the Apple Pencil USB-C. And then you have the Apple Pencil Pro for the iPad Pro 11, 13 inch with the M2, M3 and M4 chips along with the mini with the A7 Pro chip. The second thing you will need to look into with regards to your iPad is storage. Storage will be and is one of the biggest bottleneck for many users of the iPad. I would recommend you getting at least 256 gigs of storage. Trust me, organized files and you constantly using your iPad, you will find that you will run out of space. For the long term, I would recommend you also getting the iCloud Plus subscription for additional storage and accessibility across all your devices. At the time of this recording, these are the iPads that are currently available. The base iPad that starts from 349 is perfect for beginners wanting to digitize their life on a budget. With its A16 chip, it handles note-taking, digital planning, and basic organization really well. The iPad mini starts from 499. This is ideal for the on-the-go organization. It's like having a powerful, portable digital planner in your pocket. This iPad gives you the A17 Pro chip, perfect for capturing ideas and managing tasks wherever you are. Then we have the iPad Air, which starts from $599. This offers the best value for most people wanting to get more serious with their digital organization. Its M3 chip powers multitasking and handles multiple organization apps smoothly. I would recommend choosing the 11 inch unless you specifically need that larger screen for planning, then the 13 inch would be your best option. Now, my favorite is the iPad Pro, which actually starts from $9.99. And this is for those who want the ultimate organizational and iPad experience. With the M4 chip and the True Tone for comfortable viewing and color accurate projects, it's perfect for advanced workflows like editing videos and photos, more in-depth digital organization, and plus you get the most out of your iPad experience. Now that you've got your iPad, let's set it up to actually help you stay organized. Instead of adding to the chaos, think of focus modes as your organization zones. They make sure you're in the right mindset with the right apps at the right time. I divide my iPad into four distinct modes for digital organization. First is planning mode. This is for weekly planning, goal setting, and big picture organization. Only planning and reflection apps are allowed in this focus mode. The second is admin mode or work mode. This is for managing emails, finances, and all those administrative tasks that keep life and business running smoothly. The third is learning mode for organizing your knowledge, taking courses, and personal development. 
This keeps you growing while staying organized and focused. The fourth is a mindfulness mode for journaling, winding down at the end of the day, and also maintaining that work-life balance that's so important for sustainable organization and growth. I want to show you how you can actually set up these different modes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swipe over and I'm going to go into settings and then I'm going to scroll down to focus. Your iPad actually comes with default focus modes, but this is where you will actually come to add your different focus modes. Those four focus modes that I talked about earlier about for digital organization, you can be creative with their names. So I have a creator mode and inside of creator mode for my iPad, I have a dedicated lock screen as well as home screen. And I also have uh, automation where once I open a specific app, that focus mode actually comes on. So I'm going to hit on the plus sign to the top right. And then uh, you see you have the option to add custom modes, but it also gives you some default. You have fitness, gaming, mindfulness, reading, work usually appears there and other one, uh, other options. So I'm going to turn on mindfulness. All right. I'm going to hit on customize focus. Okay. So we have mindfulness on, I'm going to leave off intelligent breakthrough and silencing. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want the AI to actually prioritize, uh, notifications. So I'm going to leave that off. Once I'm in mindfulness mode, I don't want to be hearing any notifications. I don't also want to allow any people or text messages from different people or apps. I just want complete silence, right? But what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually customize the screens. Before I get into the customizer screens, it is essential for you to set this up, especially if you want to get more done and really turn your iPad into the digital productivity powerhouse. Remember the key is not to have every app the minute you pick up your device. What you want to do is to pick the apps that actually match your workflow and actually use them consistently. Now, when it comes to your mindful mindfulness focus, you can choose if you have a meditation app because Apple does have a meditation app or a focus app. You can actually activate that as well as your different focus apps of choice. Apple Freeform, you can use that for journaling. Um, if you have any games on your iPad that helps you to wind down and have intentional downtime, you can also activate those apps once that focus mode goes on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose two apps for this focus mode that I want to see once I turn on the focus mode. So the first one is for lock screen and the second one is for your home screen. In this case, I'm going to choose my home screen and then it's giving me an option to choose different options here that are already set. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to tap on edit apps, right? And by default, it's suggesting notes, music, and podcasts. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove notes, but I'm going to also select free form because I may want to like do a brain dump or journal my feelings and thoughts in that moment. I may also want to use good notes because my journal might be in there as well. And also I do have games on my iPad, so I may select word search, right? So those would be the apps that I want to show on that screen. So I'm going to tap on done and then I'm going to tap on add. Okay. Now the same thing for the lock screen, I can choose something in this case for the mindfulness, I am going to choose maybe just this simple one. I can add widgets here. So it could be maybe my, a podcast. I can maybe choose good notes, right? And then I'm going to tap on that. I am going to choose the deep option and I'm going to hit on add set as pair. All right. So 
let's demonstrate this so i already have my custom uh screens there for the lock screen as well as my home screen i also have a schedule if you want this uh, focus mode to come on at a certain time maybe at the end of each work day you can actually set that up so if i tap on this i can say it can turn on automatically i can also add a schedule where i can specify a specific time so i can say okay turn this on at maybe 8 p.m every night so let's say 8 to 9 p.m maybe i spend an hour and i maybe have this from monday to friday i take off saturday and sunday and i hit on done so that would actually come on every day between monday to friday from 8 p.m to 9 p.m which would be more or less my wind down time right i can also have focus filters where i can I can select apps with, that will be notified when this focus is turned on. Usually it would, you would have messages and you can also filter or allow notifications. You can also set your device to dark mode or light mode. You can turn on silence. So that can be added. So I would want silence mode to actually put my phone in silence mode. All right. And this is how I actually would set up my mindfulness focus. So if I come out here and I tap here and I go into mindfulness, notice in the background, it actually changes, right? And then if I swipe over, notice it's giving me music, podcast, free form, good notes and word search. That is it. It is on. And again, it's telling me that this page turns on automatically when mindfulness is on and you can edit your pages. If I lock the screen, this is what the lock screen actually looks like with those widgets that I've added in there. So the essential apps I would add for planning mode would be like Apple Notes and all those apps that you actually use to do digital planning. You can also include your calendar for time blocking. I would say use three to five apps that will help you to handle all your planning needs. And the good thing about it, you can use the native Apple apps like Apple Notes, Reminders, as well as Apple Calendar. So you don't have to pay additional subscriptions, especially if you are starting out with digital planning. One of iPad's best features for organization is split screen and the multitasking modes. You can plan while checking your calendar or take notes while you're reading or researching. This helps you to keep everything connected instead of scattered across different apps. So here are some of the multitasking features that are available to you on your iPad. So I'm going to swipe over. I'm going to go over into settings and I'm going to scroll down to multitasking and gestures and notice by default split view or slide over will be available. But if it's turned off for you, you do have these two options. Now the split view and slide over option, this is where you can have two apps running simultaneously. So let me show this. So for example, I may have Notion opening up, right? It brings up my content calendar, but I can split the view by pressing these three dots to the top center. And then I'm going to select split view and maybe I want to actually open my calendar right so it would actually bring up my calendar all right so i can have these two views if i want i can also do another slide over where it actually is my you can either split it or i can slide it where i can have the main app and maybe this smaller app showing here all right so that is your split view option you also let me close this you also have the stage manager view which i really love because this is where the true essence of 
digital organization and having more focus and having multiple apps open at the same time. So this is where you would ha actually have a docking station on the left hand side. You can choose to turn it off if you want to, or you can leave it on. So if you turn it off, you wouldn't see your docking station that usually appears to the bottom center of your screen, right? But I can go back into here. I can resize my calendar and then I can say add win another window and maybe I may want to open Safari, right? And I may want to read about that. And then I may say, I want to add another window. So that's one way in which you can actually add your windows. If you're that person that actually takes notes, you can bring up your notes. You can resize it, right? And you can take your notes. You can have your calendar there. So I can actually drag this app up on in here. If there's a specific task that I'm doing, I can actually have my timer inside of the structured app going and so I can stay focused with what I'm doing I can be taking notes I can be researching and I can do different things I can have four or five different apps open up this is a great feature that a lot of people who are doing digital planning don't oftentimes utilize but you can actually utilize your split view you can utilize your split view and slide over option, or you can utilize your stage manager view. I love stage manager. One of the key features I love about setting up these focus modes is that you can actually use automation. So when you open specific apps, you can tie it to a specific focus mode. So for example, if I go back into settings and I'm going to go down to focus and let's say, for example, I go into creator mode. On my iPad, I have CapCut automatically added. But let's say when I open Canva, I want the creator mode to come on as well. I'm going to hit on add schedule. I'm going to choose app and then I'm going to select Canva. So anytime I open Canva on my iPad, it's going to actually turn on that focus mode. Now, one of the key things for me with digital planning and using my iPad I was heavily using Apple reminders to create recurring organizational tasks. If that is a weekly planning session, it happens every Sunday. I do review, I plan the week. I would usually put that as a recurring task inside of Apple reminders. This helps me to create accountability without you having to remember every single thing. Use the apps that are available to you. It's for free, use it, and it's gonna be your accountability partner as well as your productivity co-pilot. Okay, so the key to making your iPad worth it long-term is keeping organizations simple as well as sustainable. The goal isn't perfection, it's progress. That's why I have intentional downtime built into my system. After 8 p.m., my iPad switches to that relax mode where I can just relax, I can read, I can browse, I can do things mindfully, whether it's journal, whether it's to like take everything that I've been doing for the day and just shut out the day and just wind down. The difference is it's intentional. You're choosing when to organize versus when to rest. Your iPad becomes a tool that serves your life instead of overwhelming it. Remember, digital organization should reduce stress and not create more stress. If a system feels too complicated, simplify it. The best organization system is the one you will actually use. Here is your action plan. Choose the right iPad for your needs and budget. Set up those focus modes with the right apps in the right places. Create an organization routine with automation. And remember that sustainable organization includes rest. If you want to truly master digital organization and digital planning, make sure you're subscribed for more tips on simplifying tech to improve your life. Let me know in the comments which focus mode you're excited to try out and I will see you in the next video.